before going to see uh, all the other points, first we'll see what is what are the use of NLP in different uh, fields, so that you can connect with uh, <coughs> who should I learn NLP and uh, how how to use that in your uh, project. The first thing is the sentiment analysis. You can see this in many of the in Twitter and Facebook. There are a lot of sentiment things are based on the tweets or the comments. You can see. Uh, whether it's in the positive way or the negative way that you can do with the NLP techniques and the machine translation and the real-time translation available in the, like uh, Google Translate that's also using NLP techniques then the information extract let's say you want to extract a, a, a particular detail from a different type of formats let's say um, a invoice from a different vendors and each follow a different uh, format then you want to extract uh, invoice date and the invoice number and the invoice amount and for some analytic purpose then you can use NLP then the speech recognition like the uh, Alexa, Cortana, Siri everything uses um, NLP techniques then the advertisement matching um, you can see a lot of arguments in all of the process that everything is based on NLP techniques and based on the user it will identify what is the relevant ad for that user and it will uh, bring that uh, ad and also the spell check is also using NLP techniques then the most used thing is the chatbots in every customer support application if you started using chatbots that's also using NLP techniques okay now why NLP mm -hmm. if you see the um, the communication between The communication between computers are protocol based but when two humans are discussing and they will not follow the same way for the same purpose but uh, those communication for the computers to understand those communication we need some kind of techniques that's what nlp is and uh, even in the recent times if you see we are live dealing with a lot of unstructured data to uh, convert that unstructured data to a structured format or to a usable format we need some techniques that's what nlp so if you are learning NLP, you can use all of these techniques in your project. Um, even you can, you may in future you may need to implement the chatbot in your application or in the switch recognition in your application. So it's better to learn NLP, and you can implement that in your project. So uh, this is a definition and history. The natural language processing is a branch of AI that helps computers to understand and interpret and uh, manipulate human languages. And it started in 1950 itself. After that, it evolved slowly. And after 2000, with the power of supercomputers, now we are dealing a lot of NLP techniques. We are using a lot of NLP techniques. And moving to the next, uh, the NLP pipeline. And if you want to do some NLP uh, process, there is uh, um, multiple steps to be followed. And this is the common steps in the NLP process. Um, let's uh, you know, talk about the use case. So you want to uh, identify the index of a, a book and you have that uh, book in a uh, PDF format, in a searchable PDF format. You have the text, then you can do uh, with NLP techniques. We'll go one by one and also we can uh, see how that is uh, applicable in the use case. The first thing is the sentence segmentation. And the, all this unstructured data will be in the paragraph format. For the NLP techniques uh, to be applied, we have to convert that as a single sentence. Um, first step will be that to convert as a single uh, on the sentence by sentence. So you can see the example here. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the paragraph taken from the Wikipedia page about London. And when you give this to the NLP system, it will convert as a three different sentence. And it's the same way, if you want to, that uh, you can uh, give the book content will be converted as a single sentence. Then we'll say the next step will be even from the sentence uh, uh, split it by word by word using the space. And the next one will be the predicting the part of speech. Uh, in that uh, each word in that sentence, you have to identify which is a verb, which is a noun, which is adjective, and based on that, it will identify how that particular statement is talking about what. So to identify the, the subject of that, uh, based on the subject, it will give us the result. Moving to the next one, the stemming and lemmatization. Um, this is a, 
in every sentence we have to identify what it's talking about for that it will it has a predefined set of keywords uh, that keywords it has the mapping with the tagging of multiple things so to uh, have a matching of that word so the nlp system will change that to uh, the base form the root word of that sentence so each word will be converted to like this you can see the stemming is nothing but removing the prefixes and suffixes the common prefixes and suffixes and lemmatization is uh, identifying the root word of that particular this these are all come from multiple so if any of these words identified in nlp that statement then it will convert it as mul uh, multiple so then identifying stop words um the stop words doesn't make any sense for the nlp system uh, but we in the common when we talk we use a lot of filler words like do as and and this and all but it's not uh, required for the nlp system so it will remove it when it's processing in the pipeline and um, this may not be required in few use cases like uh, I, if i want to identify an entity in a uh, statement and let's say a uh, fracture in bone i want to identify in a medical system but if i am removing in other words then that identity will not be uh, identified so uh, based on your use case you have to select either i have to use this uh, stop removing the stop words or not the differs uh, based on your use case and uh, dependency parsing or finding out the known phrases this is nothing but uh, um, it will in each sentence it will um, identify the root the connection between the each uh, uh, statement and also it will find the root of that statement so that it will take that as a final output uh, in this see if you uh, london is the capital and most popular city so here uh, it will find this london is the root and based on its ease so th th then it will talk about london so then named entity recognition this is a very important um, um, point in nlp and even most of the places we are using this uh, the named entity recognition also we have a lot of open source li libraries uh, libraries available for the uh, named entity recognition when you give the statement to the nlp system it will identify a uh, classify entities into predefined categories and uh, the people or company or geographic location or product name dates and times or amounts of money a lot of things and if you see the example um this statement apple ceo tim cook introduces two new larger iphones it identify uh, tim cook is a person apple is organization and print center is organization everything it will identify and based on, this is based on the predefined model and even um, if you want to do a name entity recognition for a different uh, domain then you have to uh, train the model with your uh, domain specific past data then it will identify correctly then co-reference resolution when human uh, discussing they will say uh, he she it in many places and we know when we know the context so we can easily map that it refers to what see he refers to what because the previous statement we will be mentioning um, that uh, some person name then will in the next statement we say he but the computer analyzes the nlp system analyzes statement by statement so it cannot uh, understand what it means for that it has to have the uh, connectivity between the statements in that uh, connectivity will be uh, captured in this uh, co reference series so this is the uh, the nlp pipeline uh, being the common pipeline being used in all of the nlp systems any questions so far okay uh, moving to what are the different techniques available in uh, different options available in azure so these are the two uh, uh, services provided by microsoft for nlp azure hd insight and microsoft cognitive services and uh, this is the common architecture uh, of uh, nlp system in azure um you can get a data from any data sources and either from the data storage or real time message injection and then that that can be 
pass to NLP system. I mean, either it can consume by an API, and the data can be consumed by the NLP system, and that that will be directly consumed by any analytics and reporting solution, or even through the analytical data store, you can connect it. So this is the common architecture, uh, the high-level architecture for the NLP system using the Azure Card, Azure NLP services. And uh, now we have two different services available in Azure. So how do I select which one to use for my use case? So let's say you have a, um, you want to use a pre-built model, then you can go for Microsoft Card Key services. And you have the large amount of data and you want to use, you have to train your custom model based on your data for your specific requirement, then you can go to Azure SD Insight. And uh, if it's a low level, you also, the, the whatever the pipeline we see, like your tokenization, limit stemming, limitization, and everything you want to name identity recognition, you want to do it specifically for your uh, project, then you can go to Azure SD Insight. And you want to do a high level NLP capabilities like identity, identification, topic detection, spell check, sentiment analysis, you can go to Microsoft Cognitive Services. It's a pre built model and it's built, uh, trained with a lot of data and it's available as API as well. So let's see what, what is Cognitive Services. Um, Cognitive Services are available with uh, uh, this uh, five different topics, I mean, five different services. A vision, speech, language, knowledge, and search. This NLP is mainly used in this language section, and uh, the uh, cognitive is a pre-trained, as I already said, pre-trained model, and also it's a group of services available as REST API or SDK. And some of the examples are uh, uh, Louis service. It allows your application to understand what a person wants in their own words. You can get their text, and you can pass it to a Louis system, and it will. You can. I will give you the. Uh, what he is talking about and what and uh, you can take a decision on that and the Q&A maker you can train your, uh, your question and answer chatbots based on your uh, FAQs and your uh, past data you can train the Q&A model and you can use it in your uh, uh, chatbots and text analytics you can uh, get a te text from the user and you can pass it to text analytics API it will give you what are the entities identified what uh, what is the sentiment for that and everything it will give you and based on that output you can um, use it and you, you can, can um, take a lot of decision on that and the translation in the real time you can uh, do a translation using our this uh, search api and the language APIs. and let's see a small demo in the text analytics api so i'm going to use uh, i'm going to pass the some uh, words that we are hearing last last two three words about this corona and uh, i'm going to give those uh, words to the text analytics api and see what it's uh, giving the giving about so this is the text analytics api um you can you can give your uh, text here and you can test it and uh, if this is available as API, you can configure and you can uh, use it in your application. It's identified, it's English language, under the conference is 100%. And everything it will give you the conference level and the key phrases, what are the key phrases available in the statement. And uh, also the, the sentiment, it gives the sentiment for the whole document and also it will give you sentiments as the sentence by sentence. If you see the, the whole document sentiment is 99% uh, negative and uh, definitely Corona is a negative thing. So it's giving, but even we didn't say anything about Corona. <laughs> This is what we are hearing for last two, uh, one month, and even in our phone call. Okay, and uh, the first sentence it says 100% neutral. You see, wash your hands regularly with, for 20 seconds with soap and water, or all the other And uh, the third sentence sentence is talking about the avoid close contact with people who are unwell. So it says 100% negative. 
and even if you see um, the it you gives the named entities what is our um, identified in those statements it's a date time duration product currency dimension and everything will identify and all of this available as a json for as result you can see that in here and when you call this from the api it will give you as a json result based on this you can um, use it in your application and also it will give you what is a particular word and where it started and the offset and uh, what's the percentage uh, the neutral negative positive everything and uh, the offset and the length the state statement where it start from everything it will give you and based on that you can um, use it in your application then uh, moving back to the ppt The next option is Azure Entity Insight. And nowadays we have a lot of open source tools available in market, but uh, many of the enterprises are not ready to use open sources because uh, they don't. Uh, the one, the main thing they are worried about is the uh, the security and uh, also the support. For that, Microsoft um, started giving this uh, support for this open source tools. You can use these open source tools like Apache Hive, Apache Kafka, Apache Headbase, Spark, everything. It with uh, in the HD Azure HD Insight, and uh, it's a managed Hadoop uh, um, Apache Hadoop service, and also it integrates uh, seamlessly with the Azure services, including data factory and data lake storage. It's easy to use, and also it's cost effective. You can scale up and scale down anytime, and also it's enterprise great. Also, it has a lot of support for the open source technologies. Um, so that's all I have. Thanks all for joining.